Welcome back to another episode of Beho Reviews on gaming and entertainment. On this episode, we take a look back to developer Infograms in releasing their action title, Slave Zero. Special thanks to Carlo Moreno for suggesting this game for a retro review. Released in 1999, Infograms released Upon the World, Slave Zero, onto the PC and the Sega Dreamcast. The game takes place 500 years into the future and tells you the story of Lu Chen, who is a sinister world overlord. You are a part of a resistance of an ancient order of warriors known as the Guardians. You play as a 60-foot humanoid robot called Slaves to wage war against Lu Chen and his forces. The game can be played in first or third person perspective as an action shooter. Almost everything in the game is destructible as you can destroy innocents in the city by simply stepping on them. You will be attacked by armies of other mechs, tanks, and helicopters of the other armies. The game itself is extremely repetitive as you transverse level to level. You will have to destroy an enemy icon, a storage unit, to protecting your own headquarters, eventually making it to the end. The game is a bit on the arcadey side with the easy controls and aiming and movement. The design of the game is a bit bland with the first couple levels in the city and then you head underground where each level tends to look the same. The gameplay itself is satisfying and fun but is wasted with the repetitive nature of the game with no real upgrades to help diversify the game a bit later on. The PC version is the version to play as it incorporates more responsive keyboard and mouse in comparison to the Dreamcast controller. This was before the two analog sticks were made for console first person action adventures with the PS2. The controls on the Dreamcast were hard to control but doable, but with its frame rate in its low 20s, it was always far from smooth. When talking multiplayer, the frame rate on the Dreamcast will chug around 10 to 15 frames per second in split screen mode and it's locally. The PC is online with no split screen leaving the fun up to your internet connection. Overall a nice diversion but when you look back at the game it is a game that is more playable on the PC but forgettable on a Dreamcast. This game receives a 6.0 out of 10 for its nice gameplay features but it gets lost in its repetitive nature and bland levels. That's it for me on this episode on Beho Reviews. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and Greg, take us out of here. Uh.